Hi, this is Bob from Insidium, and in this video we'll take our explosion particles from part 1 and add these really nice texture emission detail particles. So, let's get started. Here we are in our scene where we left off from part 1 then, and we have our system motion particles, three emitters, and we're getting this really nice uh, physics sim here as the sphere flings off these particles. So that's cool. But what we need to do now is create some detail of particles which they're not actually stuck to the sphere but they need to look like they're stuck to it and that's what we're going to set up. So what we could do is we can make our system motion inactive. Let's hold control alt and then if you click on this um, tick turns to a cross and because we held control alt it turns everything into a cross so it's all switched off okay that's that so what we want to do is we're going to create a copy of our original sphere so let's hold control drag our original sphere down and then we'll make that original one invisible with our new sphere let's just rename it sphere detail and with this new one, we don't need, we've made a copy of this Expresso tag, which we don't need. So let's delete that. And we also don't need this original material. So we'll get rid of that tag by hitting backspace as well. So here's our sphere. Before we do anything, we're going to give this a bit of detail within the geometry itself, some deformation. So we'll hit NB to see the lines. And we'll go to the sphere detail, object tab, and we're going to create more polygon detail here. So let's put this up on say 500. So loads of segments, loads more polys. And we're going to deform this. So let's go to the deformers menu here, click and hold, and we want a displacer. We'll make the displacer a child of the sphere. All right, that's good. Let's hit NA to hide the lines. Now the displacer is going to use a texture to deform the surface of this sphere. So let's go to the shading tab, and in the shader, we're going to bring in a noise. And then look straight away with the Cinema 4D noise, we have this deformation of our sphere. Let's go to the object tab of our displacer and just reduce the height down to maybe 2.5 centimeters. There we go. So we want to have a similar kind of look to our um, original material. So we can just use the same type of noise. So let's go to our shading. We'll click on our noise thumbnail and we'll change it from noise to we have been using Stuple. Let's increase that global scale way up. I mean, even that just looks pretty cool, but we could look, reduce the Y scale, increase the X scale to stretch it out a bit. Very good. That's looking pretty nice. And we could go higher detail than that if we want. We could increase the polygon count should we wish. Um, let's just try going to our sphere detail and we'll hit NB and let's pick one of the square poly modes. So octahedron, no, not octa, hexahedron is the one I'm thinking of, this one. Yeah, we'll go with that, NA. And let's just boost those segments way up to a thousand so yeah look at that we've got some fantastic detail there that's looking really cool and i'm just going to go to my displacer object let's just reduce this down to 1.5 make it a bit more subtle and that's looking good right so what we want to do is we don't want this displacer to be calculating all of the time so what we can do we can just bake this down now and forget about it so let's right click We'll do current state to object, and there is it's baked down. We'll get this one, and we'll delete it. Now, the one thing we've done in baking it down is we've actually lost that animation track, so this is static, um, but that's not going to matter. So what we will do is this. So we get this animating back to what it was. All we need to do, look, is make it a child of our original sphere. Let's just make it visible here, and there we go now we've got that animation going on perfect uh, but we don't want to be using this original texture we want a slightly different one this is the texture we're using to emit our particles which are moving we want our static particles to be emitted from a similar but different texture so let's go to our material manager we can hold control and make a copy of that original one we can put this on our sphere detail and on our sphere detail Let's go into the texture tag 
you'll notice that it looks slightly different. Um, and that's because we've baked this down and we need to go to our sphere and remember we're going to have this on spherical mapping and then it's going to match as it did our original. So that's an important step. And now we want to go into this and change it so it's different. So let's go in, into the color, into the noise, and we're going to change the, we could just change the seed and we could perhaps have slightly less, yeah, that's looking nice, something like that I like a lot. I'm just going to leave it there. So this is what we're going to omit from in our new system. We need to create that new system. So let's go to Insidium, X Particles, System. And let's just move this down. This system is going to be our system. Let's just call it System Detail. And in this system, we don't want particles emitted from this emitter to be affected by our Nexus modifiers in our system motion. Look, we've got constraints and drag going on. So to do that, we'll just go to the System Detail, Object Tab, and click only modifiers in same system, and then it's going to ignore those modifiers in this one. Okay, good. In our emitter, we're going to go to the object tab. We want to omit from our new sphere detail. So let's go to the emitter shape and change it to object. We'll drag in our sphere detail object. We don't want to omit from the poly center. We want to omit from the texture. So let's go to texture. That gives us our texture tab here. Let's click it. It's saying, which texture tag do you want to use? Well, obviously, it's the one from our sphere detail. And we want to omit from the color channel, from the light bits. We want to color the particles based on these white and gray values. We also want any radius variation to be driven by these white values. Let's put radius on color as well. And now let's go to our emission tab. We want these to be a shot on the first frame. And if we put this, look, if we put this in simulate mode rather than simulate legacy, it means we're going to get particles, look, on the first fr on frame zero, the first frame of our timeline. So that's pretty cool. And we want loads of particles, let's say, to start with just 50,000. And you see they're being born on those white bits, but they're a bit displaced from the surface of our sphere. Why is that? Well, it's because... Um, we're giving them speed. So let's just switch the speed off for now. Let's give them a radius of 2 with a variation of 0.5. And now we have these particles, which are looking really good. But if we hit play, the particles are being born, but they're not animating around with the sphere. They're just static. So there's a couple of things that we can do. We need them to turn around with the sphere. If we go to our object tab, and we move this up, we go to the emitter uh, sub-tab. We can stick particle to source object, let's click on that. Now when we hit play, yep, the particles are moving with it, so that's cool. But in the beauty, these particles are moving away from the surface ever so slightly. They have a tiny bit of speed, and that speed gives it a really good kind of three-dimensional look. So we need that, so we can't stick them, because otherwise then they can't move. So let's take this off. We'll go to our emission tab. We're going to add that tiny bit of speed. Look, just one centimeter speed. And what we need to do, though, is f uh, get them to stick to the sphere, but have that speed. And the way we are going to do it is this. We are going to rotate this entire system. And we do that, so let's just minimize it, just by putting it as a child of our animated sphere. Let's just turn this to green so we can see our particles. So if we press play now, the whole system is rotating, but our particles are still not rotating. Why not? Well, that's because if we want our particles to rotate with the system, we have to go to the system itself, to this global transform tab, and we need to drag in which emitters we want to rotate with the system as well. So let's just open up the system and drag in. We've only got one emitter. Let's plop that in. And now we have done that in the global transform. Now our particles are moving with the sphere, but they have their own speed as well. And if we look, if we go to our emitter, let's just give them too much speed so we can see the effect working. The particles are moving outwards. But look, and they're turning 
because they're part of that system because we've got that global transform active really cool let's just turn that speed down a bit that was too much so there look they're moving out but they're also rotating with our system cool so that's how global transform works let's put that speed that back down to one so we're almost there with this but we are going to make our particles stick out from the surface a little and the way we're going to do that is if we go to the object tab move up we can look offset from the origin and if we just put a couple of centimeters look we're, we're able to start them off being offset but we can go one step further to make this cool we can um, decide how much they are offset based on their color value their their black white value so if we go to our texture tag tab look we can drive that offset using our material like we have done with the emission on the color so let's just put color channel and now look the brighter particles are more offset than the darker particles brilliant so let's go back to our emitter tab we don't need eight centimeters of offset maybe just three and now we have got these particles which are offset from the surface of our sphere and if we hit play they are rotating around with it and that is looking really really cool so let's just um, switch that off what we could do just so we can see the effects of our system a little more clearly now let's add a cinema 4d sky object in that sky object we'll go to the basic tab we'll change the display color to custom and let's just make this black all right and what we could do now that we have our animated stuck particles we could reactivate our system motion so let's hold Control alt click on this and if we hit play now we're going to get the full effect we have our static detail particles and then boom, there goes our physics based constraints particles blasting off from the surface and that is how we get the effect of our um, blasting rotating sphere the final thing we need to be careful of which I've just noticed now is that if we go back to the first frame and let's just switch off our system motion if you see um, our particles rotating and we're going to end on the seam obviously we get this seam in our the mapping of our texture we can see the seam down here look and we don't really want to see that seam so let's just switch off the emitter there we can see the seam more clearly in our texture we want this to be hidden hidden really so what we can do is just offset this texture so that this bit is at the back of our animation so let's go to our sphere detail texture tag and we want to go to the offset U. and look if I move this it's offsetting that texture and we want this to finish um, without it being in view so let's just move back so if we have it kind of here to start with let's see do we, are we going to get that in view that's going to look fine so now we've offset that we'll reactivate those particles we'll reactivate our system motion we'll hit play and we've got our offset cool static particles we've got the emission of our animated friction particles and that is how we achieve this fantastic detailed effect of our planet-like body firing off these particles when it gets to its greatest rotational velocity